All right, so you just bought yourself a copy of Grey Zone Warfare. The battleground awaits, and you're geared up to immerse yourself in the heart-pounding action. But before you storm into combat, let's talk about something vital, graphics optimization. In this video, we're going to break down the essentials to ensure your game runs smoothly while still looking stunning. Well, get ready to elevate your gaming experience as we dive into the world of Grey Zone Warfare's graphics optimization. All right, so as you can see, I've got Grey Zone open here. I'm running a 7800X3D with the 4090. I'm in 4K resolution and hitting right around 144 FPS average. I think I found the perfect balance between graphics and performance here. Everything still looks stunning. The gameplay is very smooth. I'm hitting a frame time of six to seven milliseconds, so everything's very responsive. So for those of you who want the short and sweet version, I'm going to share my presets and let you know which settings to change and you can go ahead and copy what I'm running. After that, I'm going to show all the testing that I did to get to those settings. So if you're interested in seeing the long version of it, stick around, okay? All right, going into the graphics settings, I'm running a Samsung Odyssey Neo G8. It's a 4K 240Hz panel. I'm running windowed full screen, which is pretty much the same as full screen borderless. For display resolution, you want it to match your screen's resolution. So in this case, the 3840 by 2160 panel. So I have that as my resolution. For vertical FOV, you can change this according to what you prefer. I like to leave it right at the default 60 for now. V-Sync, I'm going to leave off. Brightness, contrast, saturation, gamma. You can adjust these according to your visual preferences. For frame rate limit, I'm going to leave it on unlimited because I want it to just run at the max possible for this hardware set. For the frame rate limit, I'm going to leave it at the default 30 FPS. For quality presets, basically what I do is run it at low. And I change the shadow quality to epic. For post-processing, I change this to epic as well. Motion blur, I prefer not to have any for competitive games where I might run into players. This kind of hinders my view a little bit, so I prefer to have it off. Sharpening, this is going to be handled by DLSS, so this is not really adjustable right now. Colorblind mode and colorblind mode strength. I don't use any of this uh, colorblind coloring, so I'm going to leave this on the default settings as well. For anti-aliasing upscaling method, I'm going to use DLSS since I'm on a 4090, which is an NVIDIA card. You can also use FSR if you're on an AMD card. For anti-aliasing quality, I can't change this because I'm using DLSS that's handled by the upscaler. Frame generation, I will leave it on. For super resolution, I'm going to leave it on balanced. And then for DLSS sharpness, I'm going to kick it up all the way to the max 100. Reflex low latency, I'm also going to turn that on. These are FSR settings, so these will be grayed out. Same thing with the XESS. This is Intel's version of DLSS or FSR. So... Like I said, if you just want the short and sweet version, go ahead and copy these settings and you should be pretty good. If you're interested in seeing how I tested each one of these graphics settings and how they affect the overall graphics and performance, then stick around because I'll show you how I went about testing each setting here. All right, to show you how my optimized presets stack up, on one side, we've got the fully maxed out graphics settings showcasing the game in all its Unreal Engine 5 glory. On the other side, we've got my optimized presets. So go ahead and take a look. Notice any significant difference in visual fidelity? <laughs> yeah, neither do I. But here's the kicker. My optimized settings are giving us nearly 150% more performance in terms of frames per second. Okay, so technically it's actually around 137% more FPS but close enough, right? All right, so let me walk you through my testing methodology. I kicked off things by running the game on max settings to establish the upper limit for visual fidelity. Then I went to the other end of the spectrum and ran it on the lowest settings possible. And to me, there's really not much separating the two extremes. So here's how I tackled it. I took each setting and dialed it down one by one, then did a side-by-side -side comparison to really scrutinize any visual discrepancies. And you know what? When it came to tinkering with the settings under the quality subset, 
It was like trying to spot a needle in a haystack. I couldn't really discern much of a difference at all with any of these settings. The only setting that really caught my eye, shadow quality. When I dropped it down to low, the shadows just didn't look right and it was a real distraction. So in my optimized presets, I made sure to keep shadow quality at epic. Now I'm not saying there's no difference at all. It's probably true that if you zoom in with the magnifying glass and scrutinize every little pixel, you might spot some differences between epic and low settings. And visual preferences are subjective, so maybe you are more sensitive, but at least for me, in the heat of gameplay, when you're focused on objectives and immersed in the action, those discrepancies become practically invisible. I mean, seriously, if you told me the settings were cranked up to epic when they were actually on low, I doubt I'd even notice. So for me, it's all about finding that sweet spot where performance meets visual appeal. By dialing everything down to low, except for shadow quality, I'm squeezing every drop of performance out of my system without sacrificing much, if any, of that jaw-dropping Unreal Engine 5 visual splendor. Grey Zone Warfare looks breathtaking regardless of whether it's on epic or low settings. It's like having two equally stunning versions of the same masterpiece. So why not enjoy the game at its smoothest? knowing you're not missing out on any of that eye candy. So for me, as long as I have shadow quality set to epic, everything else I like to set it on low in that quality subset for settings. When it came to the scaling settings though, that's where the differences really started to show up. Particularly with the super resolution options, the main thing that stood out to me when comparing the different settings is the visual fidelity of grass and foliage. On DLAA, auto, quality, and balanced, everything looked pretty solid visually speaking, but when I switched over to performance and super performance, it was kind of like looking through a haze, the textures became blurry and it detracted from the overall experience for me. So while those high performance settings might seem appealing, they just didn't hold up when it came to maintaining the visual integrity of the game. So by using DLSS balanced and lowering most of the graphics options, I was able to get the frame time pretty low, which meant that I felt comfortable using frame generation to push out an even smoother visual output. As we all know, frame generation does add a little bit of input lag, but at a total frame time between six and seven milliseconds, it still feels incredibly responsive while looking butter smooth. All right, so that's all I got for this one. I hope it was helpful, informative, or entertaining in some way. If it was, don't forget to lock on to the like button using your EXPS2 red dot hollow sight and pull that trigger. As always, thanks for spending some of your valuable time here. It means the world to me as I continue to work towards my dream of creating content full time. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for all the likes, comments, and subs as it really helps boost my channel's visibility. It's time for me to get back to the grind and I'll see you in the next one.